And we're moving on to part two. Everybody ready? ready. All right, first thing you're going to do is take out your calendar. Tim reminded everybody that the November 7th is the date of the election. So make sure that by that time you've either voted absentee or that you have um, gone in to vote on that day. Number two. Last I heard, the Russians will not be influencing our elections, so we're not going to worry about that either, okay? Point number three. What Tim didn't mention, but I think is always good for us to remember, at this time, according to the website, we have about 4,700 kids in Hastings that we are educating every year. So they represent a wide variety of people and interests and everything. And before we go one step further, I'd like a round of applause for these people who are willing to give up an awful lot of their time to help these kids in the next few years. And in case you just happen to like useless trivia, which I do, um, the Hastings School District is about 170 square miles, in case you're wondering. So when he's talking about kids on the fringes and going other places, it really is a pretty big deal. <sighs> so here we go. Are you guys ready? What we have coming up on November 7th is that we have technically four vacancies. One of them is a special election, meaning it's only three years. It's not a full term. And um, Dave, that was the one you were interested in, correct? Two, oh, it's a two-year. Okay, yeah, by the time the election happens and everything. So we have a two-year uh, term, and the others are all the traditional four-year terms. Now, you might be thinking, this doesn't look like six people up here, and it's not. <laughs> Um, Scott Gergen, who is currently on the board, was not able to be here tonight, but he uh, submitted a video, and so Tom's going to help us show that to represent his point of view. And the sixth person um, has not responded, so obviously wasn't able to make it tonight. So we're going to just go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask each of you to introduce yourself and tell us why you would like to be elected to the school board within a two-minute time frame. So we'll just take you in the order in which you are sitting. Hi, my name is Scott Gergen. I am a resident here in the city of Hastings. My wife and I and our three sons have lived here um, pretty much our, our entire lives. I grew up uh, just outside of Hastings, between Hastings and Vermilion, at our family farm. Uh, my parents had 10 children. I am the 10th of 10. And uh, I think a good deal of my passion for education comes from them. My parents were children of the Depression, and my father's father uh, passed away when he was only 13 years old. So my father only was able to go to school through the eighth grade. My mother graduated from high school. I'm happy to say that our parents put a very uh, uh, a big importance on education and it was understood that continuing your education in some form after high school was a given. My passion for Hastings uh, came about again once we had kids. Uh, we moved back to the Hastings area when our oldest was going to be entering kindergarten specifically because of the community and because of the schools. So with that, as my children got older and I began to have a little more time in my schedule, I wanted to give back to the community. And I've been able to do that for the last four years via the school board, and I've enjoyed it tremendously. It's something that I'd like to continue, and I would ask for your vote so that I can do that for the next four years. Thank you. Ah, let there be light. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Dave Pemble. I'm a candidate for school board. I was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and moved to Hastings as a young child. I'm a graduate of the Hastings school system. My higher education includes a graphic design degree from Dakota County Votech and a retail management degree from uh, St. Paul Technical College. I have an air ground search rescue specialist from the Civil Air Patrol, United States Air Force. I'm a part-time licensed peace officer with the state of Minnesota, and I hold a lead machinist certificate from the state of Minnesota. I work at Prairie, I had worked at Prairie Island Nuclear Plant. I'm married to Dolores Brown, owner of the school house. We've raised four daughters in the Hastings school system. Their dedication to education led two of them to become teachers 
one locally and one outstate. A third is, has a management position with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and the fourth is a state auditor with the Department of Revenue, State of Minnesota. I retired recently from XL Energy with almost 40 years of service. My lead position the last 14 years consisted of managing budgets for the maintenance MT&E program and developing bids and directing purchasing of critical equipment for our nuclear power facility. Included in our long time uh, involvement in 4-H program locally, at the county level, and at the statewide level. I've done a tour of duty with the Civil Air Patrol, United States Air Force. I'm a past member of the Hastings Police Reserves. I've served the city on the Public Safety Advisory Commission, the 2030 Comprehensive Plan Commission, currently serving on the Parks and Rec Commission, and I'm an active member of the school board, or an active member of the school volunteer group. I've chaperoned many uh, field trips, uh, show choir, marching band, and orchestra activities. But my most recent school involvement as a volunteer has been to serve on the... I'm out? <laughs> okay. Don't I'll, leave us hanging. I'll, I'll finish. You can finish your sentence. Okay, very good. Was working on the school facilities committee, which we examined and prioritized the school properties, maintenance, and funding needs, which is part of the upcoming bond levy question on the ballot on November 7th. I appreciate the time, and I look forward to your support in the upcoming election. Thank you for your time, and have a great evening. Right, that's kind of what I thought, too. <laughs> um, while you were listening to Dave, you also got entertained by Pat's uh, signaling here. That's why she, we're taking a moment for her to move. Kelsey Waits will be our next candidate to introduce herself and tell us why she would like to be elected to the school board. Hi, I'm Kelsey. I just want to start by saying thank you for having me here. I love what the AAUW stands for, and it's an honor to be speaking with you today. Um, being a prior military, we've experienced a number of different communities, and when we first visited Hastings four years ago, we immediately fell in love, and we have been here ever since. I have a degree in psychology from Wellesley College and a master's in statistics from the University of Connecticut and a strong background in applied research. I am also the mother of two young kids, ages four and seven. My youngest just started a class at Tilden, and my oldest, Abby, is actually homeschooled. She is one of my big motivations for my school board run. We never planned to homeschool, but after she gave herself an ulcer in preschool due to severe anxiety, it was obvious that she needed to be brought home. So we're lucky enough that we could do that for her, but I understand that that is not a realistic possibility for every family. So the families who struggle in the current system due to mental or behavioral disorders, physical disabilities, or even curriculum difficulty need someone who can relate to them and be an advocate for them. And I wanna be that person. I believe that the fact that we homeschool is a strength and not a detriment. Being a homeschooler allows me to look at the school district from an outside perspective, and our reasons for homeschooling make me a stronger advocate for supportive student environments and men as mental health problems in children continue to rise. I'm a firm believer in the public school system and its importance to the community. Whether you homeschool, send your children to private school, or are even retired, the strength of this school district will affect you. Having a strong, diverse school board will help ensure that we're prepared for any problems that come our way, and I wanna make sure that I'm a part of that. My background in STEM, my perspective as a young transplant, my experience in military life, and my experience as a homeschooler all give me a unique voice on the school board. And sometimes that new, fresh perspective is exactly what a local government needs. It would be my honor to serve this community and to use my, my gifts to help strengthen our education system. So thank you. Um, our next candidate will be Kim Christensen. Hello. Um, so my name is Kim Christensen. Um, I grew up in Farmington, Minnesota, where I uh, married my now husband. Tomorrow will be 25 years. Um, 
After uh, graduation, I attended the College of St. Catherine and graduated in 92 with a speech communications degree. Um, after that, I had some kind of different jobs. Um, and then I got a job with Farmington School District as um, I worked some in Title I and some as a PSA, and I worked there for three years. Um, at that point, I was going to go back to school, but my husband and I found out we were having twins. So <laughs> instead, I stayed home. So I stayed home with the boys and was a stay-at-home mom for seven years. Um, when our boys entered first grade, um, that is when I... Um, got a job with the Hastings School District as a PSA, so that's a pupil support assistant. Uh, I mostly uh, worked with emotional behavior disorders in the level three program. Um, I guess I should go back. We moved to Hastings in 96, and we had every intention of moving back to Farmington because that's where our family is. And when the boys were ready to, to um, start school, we just heard so many good things about the Hastings School District, and I can say I completely agree with that because both boys graduated in 2017 from Hastings, um, started um, in kindergarten through Hastings, and went all the way through in 2017. Um, in the fall of 2016, I transferred over to Tilden as a PSA, and in February, I needed to give up my full-time position as both my aging parents both came down with health problems. So now I'm still a sub in our district. Um, I want to stay active in our school district. I believe in public education. I believe in our Hastings School District. And um, I feel I could be a strong voice for kids, our staff in our district, our community, and our parents. Thank you. And our last introduction will be from Peter Blissenbach. Hi, thanks for having me. It felt like I had to run up here to uh, beat the clock here. But, <laughs> um, so I'm not a politician. I'm not a formal speaker of any kind. But I'm more of a storyteller, and that's probably what I'm going to tell you about tonight. So uh, about 20 years ago, my wife and I, we were looking for uh, a good school system and a good community. We'd been in a few different other places, uh, different schools, and uh, we'd heard about Hastings. We were impressed with some of the things that we saw. Uh, and, uh, and now, 20 years later, we've, we've had seven kids uh, go through the school system, and our, our daughter, Kathy, will graduate uh, in two more years. So um, what we've experienced in Hastings and with the school system are extraordinary educators. Um, my daughter, uh, Kathy, for instance, and this is the same story every year, comes home excited to tell us uh, the teachers that she has for the upcoming year, and I'm sure that many in this uh, room have shared those same types of stories. Um, the reason that, I'm, that I volunteered to join the school board in March and to, to run this uh, this coming fall is I, I want to protect that for uh, for our neighbors and for future generations. My daughter is pretty much going to be done uh, uh, within a couple of years, but we've got some real challenges coming up with uh, a lower enrollment. We have to be smart and efficient with what we do, and I'm running out of time. Um, <laughs> but I think we have some real challenges there with. Uh, balancing the budget and making sure that we spend our money wisely and to protect the important programs for our schools. So I'd appreciate your vote, and I appreciate you having me here tonight. Thank you. Okay. And in the interest of time, there is only one question tonight that each candidate will be asked, but it's a big one. And I'll repeat the question before each candidate so we can kind of refocus on that each time. And the question is this. Historically, there has been co a college preparatory focus for all students, which may not be the most suitable for all students, even if it's a worthy goal. In some cases, a college education does not have the best interest of the student in mind. What is your thinking on adopting a two-track system where students could focus on, first, college preparation 
or technical skills that lead to occupations that do not require a college education and may be more directed to apprenticeships in the trades or with corporations. Got that? <laughs> okay. Dave? Okay. Oh, Scott. Oh, sorry. Scott's first. I forgot about Scott again. That's Don't fine. tell Scott. No, we, we won't say anything. Tom? We, we, we're editing, right? Okay. <laughs> 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 Nobody watches that. <laughs> All right, just to recap the question, as I understand it, it's about creating a two-track system within the high school for either uh, deciding to go down the college uh, preparatory road or perhaps in a, uh, a non-college role, whether that be in the trades or, or uh, intern uh, internships, et cetera. I, at, at surface level, I'm not in favor of that, and here's why. I believe that the high school education is, is essentially a baseline for being able to successfully enter into society, whether that be going on to college, going to a tech school, going into the military, or entering into the workforce directly after high school. I think that Hastings High School does an excellent job with not only the college preparatory path, with our post-secondary education opportunity, with our advanced placement classes, with our college in the schools classes. That's on one side. On the other side, we have a very robust technical education center here where we have a very advanced wood shop, an advanced metal shop. We have a three bay auto shop with a full spray booth. And we work very, very closely with our technical colleges to ensure that the programming that we're offering here at Hastings High School prepares our students to enter into those technical colleges um, very, very successfully. Uh, in addition, there are numerous other schools such as NIT, Rasmussen, et cetera, where a student who doesn't care to go into the trades but perhaps wants a two-year computer programming degree can enter those very successfully. But I believe that that baseline education that we offer here at Hastings High School is critical to that. In addition, I would question how a student in their early teen years would be able to know what they want in terms of which track. I've seen that not only with my own college career where I changed my major three times, but also with my oldest son who after his first year of college changed his major dramatically. So I would say prepare our students regardless which track they want to go down. I think that Hastings uh, at Hastings, we do that very, very well for, for either path. Thank you, Scott. And, <laughs> um, and now, you ready this time, Dave? Sure. Okay, and I think we'll just move right into it. Very good. In order to open the aspect of the opportunity to all students, I would support a two-track system that is similar to what we have here already in the Hastings community. The issue of careers, uh, they, they're based on, you know, not every person, not every student is a college student. But those students could be a very good vocational technical person at using some of the technical skills that they're already gaining within the school system, but also participating in the local technology programs and video um, aspects that can be secured locally. Many of our well-paying jobs, well-paying careers, need vocal or need uh, vocational technical education or an apprenticeship program, such as in the building trades. Just think of all the technical vocational jobs that make our lives easier. Remember the house that you live in, the home that you live in, needed qualified people to build that home. We also needed people to provide the power to run that home, to keep the heat on, keep the air conditioning running, keep the sewer and water going. People whose career 
in our transportation system, the planes we take, the trains we take, our personal vehicles that we drive, all take a very technical aspect. So these are some of the vocational needs that I think qualified personnel could greatly lead to great occupations now and in the future. I feel we need to provide an avenue for every student to be successful, whether they are college bound or interested in pursuing a technical career. Thank you very much. I watched the time. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay, and I said I would repeat it, and now seems like a good time to do that. So before Kelsey comes up, the question is, historically, there has been a college preparatory focus for all students, which may not be the most suitable for all students, even if it's a worthy goal. In some cases, a college education does not have the best interest of the student in mind. What is your thinking on adopting a two-track system where students could focus on college preparation, or technical skills that lead to occupations that do not require a college education and may be more directed to apprenticeships in the trades or with corporations. Kelsey? Hi. I'm actually, I'm going to agree with Dave on this. Um, and our family is a great example of how not all children learn the same way. Too often, it seems that we're trying to force children to fit a specific mold. But just like typical schooling isn't right for some children, like my daughter, college and a college prep education are not right for others. Hastings does a great job with the electives that they offer and not weighting grades to promote science courses over arts courses, but it is still heavily college prep with a focus being on those sorts of things. <coughs> So there are already a number of vocational schools in the country, and many students who choose to go to these schools also still choose to continue their education into college. So we're not, having a two-track system is not forcing 14-year-olds to pick what they want to do with their lives. It's simply giving them more options. So I don't believe that we should force children into any mold, whether it's preparing them for a college education that they don't desire or forcing them to choose a trade by the time they reach high school. We want to expand their opportunities without pressuring them into one track. So the vocational high schools that I've researched spend half of their time doing vocational courses, but they still spend half of their time fulfilling core requirements, but less core requirements than a typical college prep um, opportunity. So at graduation, the students have a certification in their field and they're immediately employable should they choose to go into the workforce. And then after graduation, if students decide to continue their education, the, they have the core requirements in place to do so, but they have a flexibility for income if they need to earn money while they're in college. So I think that diversifying our education system through a two-track system would strengthen the education that we offer current students and it may also bring in more students from other districts as we continue to struggle with low enrollment. And with Kim's permission, we're gonna skip the question since we're pretty overloaded on hearing the question. And we're gonna just let her go ahead and get started with how she's chosen to answer it. Um, I so love this idea. Um, I would love to see us have a two track system. Question is, when do we start it? Do you start introducing it in middle school? Do you start introducing it in high school, that's kind of the big question. Um, kids are all not created equal, and um, I, I like to see students with a well-rounded education, so I'd still want them to, you know, the core subjects, the English, the social, the science, the math, because um, I think that's important with any trade that you go into. Um, we have some friends from Iowa that um, they do a lot of internships with local companies um, for the high school kids. Uh, one example is the woodworking class. For two hours every week, they go and they actually build with a, help with a house and learn the trade of home building. Um, 
I love that. Right, right on the job scene. Know what it's really like. Um, we are so um, in a, such a huge need for skilled labor in our country that, um, for instance, linemen. I just read in about ten years. Um, we're going to have a, a huge short shortage of that, and I know um, in Bedette, Minnesota, they uh, they are really working closely with the electric company and the high school to help those men and women that possibly would show an interest in that and teach them this is what it's about. This is how much you can make. So I absolutely would love to see a two-track system. Thank you. And it's been a while, so we are going to reread that question one more time. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, historically, there has been a college preparatory focus for all students, which may, be, may not be the most suitable for all students, even if it's a worthy goal. In some cases, a college education does not have the best interest of the student in mind. What is your thinking on adopting a two-track system where students could focus on college preparation or technical skills that lead to occupations that do not require a college education and may be more directed to apprenticeships in the trades or with corporations. And so we will have our last candidate, Peter. Uh, in all honesty, I'd forgotten the question, so. <laughs> um, so the, uh, all the candidates make very good points. Scott Gergen made some very good points. Um, I'm very much a fan, and I've, I've witnessed this with my seven kids. They all have different talents, different interests, and they don't always know what those are uh, at an early age, um, through age 22 often, um, <laughs> or 24 or 26. Um, but uh, they do need that opportunity to explore, whether that's in the trades, whether that's on a college track, I do question um, them getting into a track too early um, because of uh, their interests can be very diverse. They may need to do some exploring when they're in high school. I'm all about um, options in high school and I'm all about that learning process so that when they graduate from high school, uh, they're in a position to understand their passions, what they're good at, and maybe what they're not so good at. So I think high school is really a, a unique opportunity where they get to be a generalist where they get to explore who they are and what they are. So um, I, I have concerns about a two-track system because if it inhibits that freedom, that opportunity for them to explore, then uh, I'd have concerns about that. Um, but again, I'm always open to um, how people want to implement that, and if they can keep a certain openness to that, then, uh, then I'd be open to thinking about that. That's it. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, there, we're, the candidates will be sticking around for a few minutes. You can ask them some individual questions, but there is, uh, we haven't built it in to be able to ask everybody any other additional questions. So we could have a round of applause and thank them for their willingness to serve, and we'll call this a night. Lisa, do you have something? And yeah, I think that's a good idea. Uh, Hastings Community Television does deserve a huge... Thank you for um, doing what they are recording. Don't know him. <laughs> okay, Mike and Kurt, especially round of a special round of applause for them. <laughs> We have an outstanding community. We have outstanding schools. And I am, again, very proud that these people are all willing to serve. So we'll uh, call it an evening. And uh, they'll be here for a few minutes if you have any follow-up questions.